Tonight, some are whining about censorship with the decision to finally remove Russian propaganda network RT. You see, he's, he's, he's excited. Finally, they've, finally, finally, finally they've, they've removed somebody who's going to challenge my bullshit perspective on this whole situation, my, my State Department-fueled perspective on the situation. Finally, somebody removed the opposing view. Finally. From major cable providers and streaming services around the country. Now, I've been calling for this for almost a week now, and I'm relieved that big media companies... He's happy. Hold up, listen, 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 listen. Finally listen, listening. Listen. He's happy that corporations are censoring people. So he's, he's going to get to it. He's going to get now, to it. Now, as those who watch this show regularly know, I tend to support allowing more speech. Not Clearly less. not. Less. <laughs> I'm troubled when big tech companies suspend people for statements that are just offensive. I fight back against cancel culture that sends, tries to end careers of people for making controversial comments that hurt certain people's feelings. But in this case, I believe. So basically, what this what this fucking this numbskull just said is, I love when corporations uh, censor uh, people pushing back on warmongering and U.S. State Department talking points. But I'm perfectly, I'm per like, but I don't want I don't want corporations to censor me, Daddy. I don't want them to censor me, Daddy. When when it's a bunch of fucking pink and purple haired college kids that want to like cancel, like kick Dave Chappelle off of Twitter or some shit, or or kick Ben Shapiro, you know, off of YouTube or what's that? I forgot Stephen Crowder. That's when he doesn't. Th this is nonsense. This is fuckery. This is buffoonery. This is nuts. This is crazy. And he's a news guy. He's a news guy. He gets paid probably tens of thousands of dollars to say this bullshit. Private media platforms are 100% justified in exercising the power to say goodbye to a Russian propaganda network when an entity is providing... When are we going to say goodbye to CNN, MSNBC, um, all of them, Fox? Like CNN and MSNBC pushed the propaganda. They pushed Russiagate that put us in this fucking position that gave, that gave, um, that gave footing... To, to the fucking neocon death rattlers <laughs> that want to push war with fucking Russia, which is a tant tantamount to teasing World War III. Russiagate led to this point. Those guys are, you know, those guys don't get censored off. The same people that push the um, Iraq war, same people that push Syria, same people that push for Libya, then invited Hillary Clinton on to come and bang for the set after they killed um, fucking <laughs> Gaddafi in Libya. She came on and banged for the set. We came, we saw, he died. Ha, ha, ha. They brought her on to brag about it. Raggy? <laughs> you don't want them kicked off? Holy fuck. This is, this is, this Fighting is, this is a sound. state mandated misinformation. When they're literally sent. Yeah, like the COVID measures you, you fuckers have been pushing out for the last two years. Jesus Christ. Real facts. But, but he's fine with people like Fauci coming on every day lying about COVID. To ensure that outright lies and distortions are told. In that case, they're more than justified. I think they should feel obliged to pull the propaganda. Today, RT finally getting dumped by major distributors like DirecTV and Roku. Facebook, TikTok, and Google have also announced restrictions on RT's content. Until the past few days, the network was available in most American cable homes and is still available on many. Now, I've watched RT all week. And it's basically a spigot of lies and misinformation designed to justify the unjustifiable. So what he means by that is I've been watching RT all week and God damn it, they've been making my fucking job harder because they're actually telling the truth. <laughs> That's what he means by that. Because the main the narrative you're hearing in the mainstream media media now is propaganda. He's the propagandist. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. He's he's gaslighting right now. That is what he's doing, which is basically fucking lying. That's what he's doing right now. Because well, I, and I'm not saying, like I said earlier, I'm not saying that RT doesn't have his biases. But what I'm what I am saying is, what I am saying is that what they're saying is correct. What they're saying about the Nazis in Ukraine is correct. What they're saying about what Ukrainians are doing to civilians trying to flee are correct. You know what they've been saying about what the Ukrainian government has been doing to black people, to Africans who are st studying in the country is correct. That's another story I'm going to be covering on Monday. So they're, they've been correct on a lot of things. Now, am I saying that there, there isn't some bullshit in RT's reporting? No, I'm not saying that. But for the most part, they are correct. And the reason why he was pissed watching RT is because he knows fuckers are watching that show and then watching what he's saying and knowing that he's saying some bullshit. That's what he's mad about. As Russian bombs land throughout Ukraine tonight, they talk about trying to denazify Ukraine. They portray themselves as 
heroic liberators, reuniting families who've been torn apart. They claim Western media is hiding the truth from their viewers about how the Ukrainian military is murdering citizens in the street. I covered it on my show Wednesday night. They, they've they murdered 14, over 14,000 people in the Donbass region in the last eight years. 14,000 fucking people. It is the... Di and they're, they're, um, be, they're brutalizing and killing civilians who are trying to f uh, flee now. Dictionary definition of propaganda. Yet somehow, there are still some prominent voices out there mourning its demise. Well, the television network Russia Today which is Russia's state media, is being censored all over the world. It's not an endorsement of Russia today to note. It might be interesting to know what the other side is saying. It might be good to have more information, not less. The censorship seems very open, without apology, and it seems more widespread than maybe I've ever seen it. So you heard what Tucker Carlson said, right? I don't agree with Tucker on everything, but he sounds like a rational guy. He sounds like, okay, that doesn't like, that sounds like, you know, a, a level headed thing to say, you know, okay. Now let's listen to what this warmongering maniac has to say. <laughs> Tucker Carlson refers to RT as a news organization with quote journalists, which of course is nonsense. Again, the same people, the same people who cheered on the um, Iraq war, the same people who pushed Russiagate, the same people who pushed the China misinformation about the Uyghurs, the same people that pushed Libya, Syria, Venezuela, <laughs> uh, uh, fucking uh, Vietnam. Go down the list. You can keep going. Those are those are real journalists. They're real journalists. The st st um, the people who basically are stenographers for the state department they're real journalists but rt journalists aren't and he's talking about all of them independent media so he's talking about people like richard medhurst he's talking about chris fucking hedges he's talking about george galloway he's talking about so many people there abby martin so many independent journalists that work with rt nico house all of them they're not journalists okay but this isn't again i'm getting this correct and again like i said earlier i'm in my basement recording this right now okay i work at a fucking warehouse and i'm a rapper <laughs> that's that's doing a YouTube show from his basement. And I understand more of what's happening in Ukraine than a guy who gets paid ten, tens of thousands of dollars, has all the research teams, all the, the budget for all the research teams he can have, and he's still getting it wrong. Is he doing that by accident? He's just misguided? No, he's a propagandist. He's doing it on fucking purpose. A two-sided issue. This is the rejection of a channel doing the bidding of the Russian government. Which is and again, you see the you see the big ass mirror sitting in front of his face right now. They should have a big ass mirror right in front of him right now, because like nigga, you're talking about yourself right now. <laughs> like I said, Iraq, Libya. Syria, I'm not. You don't have to. I, like I'm just going to keep repeating that <laughs> because it's the same shit. Censoring truthful information about the conflict and shutting down all independent voices. Just in the past 24 hours, Russian state television has reported that Ukraine is somehow attacking its own buildings in an effort to demonize Russian forces trying to, quote, liberate Ukrainians. They're telling viewers that Joe Biden is a Nazi along with members of Congress from both sides of the aisle. I showed you the picture of him literally shaking hands with a Nazi, and we all know that, that Joe Biden is literally a white supremacist. He's literally a white supremacist. He gave the... the he gave he gave a, a, a eulogy at um, a white like this guy was a straight up segregationist. He gave a eulogy at his funeral. Joe Biden has said so much racist shit over his career. The, <gasps> I'm sorry about that, guys. The crime bill so much. Joe Biden is a straight up white supremacist. So I feel like he would be proud of shaking hands with Nazis. But regardless, I'm not saying Joe Biden is a Nazi, but he's definitely a white supremacist. As well as other world leaders. They say that Ukrainian forces are using children as human shields to protect themselves. It's all utter nonsense. And if believed, it's downright dangerous. Propagandists always say that information is dangerous. And again, this guy, he know like, and this is where the hypocrisy comes in, because everything he said at the beginning comes full circle in this big ball, this big conglomerate of just fuckery and bullshit. <laughs> because that is the number one thing that propagandists say. That this, uh, the information from them was dangerous. Ooh, so dangerous. So while I'm not generally in favor of stifling voice. It's dangerous to you because then people will know you're a fucking liar when they see it. When we're talking about a concerted effort 
on the part of a state-sponsored agency to poison minds across the world in the context of a war of choice. <clears throat> now, that's different. And I think worthy of private businesses doing the right thing. So, again, he's perfectly fine with private corporations banning people and censoring people. But he sounds like he doesn't want the government to do it. But he's OK with the private corporations censoring people on behalf of the government. He just doesn't want them to do it when it's purple haired college kids demanding that they ban people and censor people. You see, you see the like he he's he's not opposed to cancel culture. He's opposed to the bullshit culture war cancel culture that's been going on. That's what he's that's what he's opposed to. He sounds like he's knee deep in the culture war. Joining us now is Aaron Mate. He's a contributor to the Nation magazine and host of the Pushback podcast. He believes the outlets which have uh, pulled RT are engaging in censorship. Aaron, thank you very much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. So, what do you think I'm getting wrong here? I think you're getting wrong a very basic principle that if you don't support that came out of his mouth at the beginning of this statement <laughs> speech for those whose views you oppose, then you're not for free speech. I personally believe in free speech. I think it's a very fundamental right. And I'm very grateful that I live in a country that generally respects it by your standards. That, Say that tell that to fucking David Webb. <laughs> I, I, tell that to all the tell that to fucking Serena Shim. Tell that to all the journalists who have been, tell that to Chris Hedges. Come on, come on, Aaron. ...should be taken off the air for pushing pro-state misinformation. Then every single news network in the U.S. that pushed the Iraq war lies, that pushed the lies that brought us into Libya, <laughs> uh, should be taken off the air. Every single Saudi Arabian television network that is justifying the genocide going on right now with U.S. support in Yemen should be taken off the air. He's, te and he's texting, holy fuck, this guy is like debunking my bullshit in real time. Holy shit, who invited this guy on? Every single Israeli oh. network that whitewashes the decades long occupation of Palestinian land should be taken off of the air. Yeah, I don't want those ne uh, networks taken off the air. I don't agree with what they might say, but the way to counter so anything you disagree with is to oppose it. And by the way, on that front, I don't even accept your characterization of RT. I'm sure there's plenty of state Russian propaganda on RT, as you described. But also, I can think of voices of dissent, like Afshin Ratanzi. He hosts a show called Going Underground. A few days ago, he had on a former Russian lawmaker, and he extensively challenged her on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So your characterization that there's no dissent allowed on RT, I can tell you from personal it's experience, is false. Yeah. OK, well, I'll, I'll discuss RT in a minute. But you asked a broader question. So he starts the whole thing. The whole segment is about RT. Oh, I don't want to talk about that now because I know you're going to fucking steamroll me when we start talking about it. Let me check the chat real quick, see what you guys are saying. <laughs> All right, let's get back into it. Question, which was about comparing it to U.S., for example. Oh, they, they echoed the propaganda. Here's the difference is they didn't have to. They weren't required to. They wouldn't have been taken off Hold the up. air. If <laughs> can list journal Phil Donahue, he got taken off the air for telling the truth about war. Chris Hedges got kicked out. Of, he got um, smeared and um, kicked out, uh, fired from the New York Times for opposing the Iraq war. There's so many journalists that, like, do, do you honestly, there's a reason why they don't bring people like Aaron on, except on places like Fox. And um, whatever news nation is, I guess, uh, I guess this is on the Hill. It's another, but it's an online platform similar to RT's model a little bit. But there's a reason why CNN wouldn't bring somebody like him, Max, Jimmy, um, Richard Medhurst, all these independent journalists out there. There's a reason why CNN and MSNBC, even if they disagree with them, have them on to have the conversation. They're not going to do that because they're going to expose their sh their bullshit to their faces in real time. And their audience is going to say, wow. Well, the ones that aren't fucking straight up shit lips, they're going to be like, wow. So I've been lied to all this time by these motherfuckers. I'm going to start watching their shit. That's why they have this bone to pick with online, you know, the online, you know. Um, um, independent media, you know, it's conspiracy theory media and shit. That's why they use January 6th as a pretext to start censoring and banning people. I don't know how, like, you, you have to be dumb to not understand this. Literally. If they didn't say, they may have gotten things wrong. You may be ready to criticize. They may have gotten things wrong. Again, I'm doing this shit in my basement. I'm doing it in my basement. On a shoestring fucking budget. 
and I understand this. He's in a thousand dollar studio wearing a thousand dollar suit with a nice little lapel he has on his jacket there. Um, nice haircut for a white man. You know, I don't. You know, I'm black, so I wear I wear a headband because I got a fucked up hairline right now. <laughs> nice hairline. Nice. Looks like he has a nice eh, jawline's okay. Aaron has a stronger jaw. Than J- Yo, Aaron's got like a fucking Superman jawline. Holy fuck. Aaron should play Superman. Anyway, uh, uh, you know, nice studio. Probably get thou- tens of thousand dollar check. Um, and he, you think he's getting this wrong on purpose? Again, you got to remember, these guys are basically actors. Also, remember, the president of Ukraine is an actor. Size <laughs> them. You may say they take the government's position at face value too often. Okay, fair enough. Those are all legitimate issues to discuss. Too often, they do it all the time to the point that people are shocked when a journalist pushes back on them. <laughs> There's a reason why Joe Biden. So for, for Vladimir Putin to be this you know hardcore censorship propagandist guy, he can stand in front of the media and take questions from different people and answer their questions. Joe Biden has um, pre, pre-arranged questioning. Like they pick the journalist that, that they want to take questions from, which means that they also... Um, influence their answer like they they know the answers that are coming (laughs) or or the questions that are coming so they can have predetermined answers written out for him because joe biden doesn't even know what the fuck his name is (laughs) you see the again the hypocrisy it's not the same as saying as they do in the russian media you're not allowed to say anything else and if you do you know what's going to happen exactly what happened to the only independent station in russia they get shut down it's different And I don't agree with echoing the tactics of Russia's autocratic system and shutting down networks. I think but, it's supposed to be about government. free speech here. And by the way, this but, isn't but, government. But, These are private the way, entities. That's even but, that's even worse. Private entities, Doug. I don't. Do, do, again, do, you have to explain this to this motherfucker. He's a journalist, and you have to explain this to him. Does he not understand the money that pours into the mainstream media from these private sectors? The same money that pours into the pockets of <laughs> of the fucking politicians? It's a big capitalist gangbang, and we're not fucking invited. Apparently, this guy is, and he looks more like a pitcher than a catcher, if you know what I mean. Right. <laughs> we're a catcher than a pitcher. By the way, speaking of private entities, look. <laughs> that big capitalist gangbang, he looked like he catching, not pitching, bro. <laughs> raise a very interesting point when you say that no one told anyone what to say back in during the iraq war in 2003 uh tell that to phil donahue phil donahue had a very popular <laughs> show on msnbc yeah. but he was saying the wrong things he was challenging the war but that's the but that was msnbc's he was, position Dan? he was taken that, off that, of the yeah. air but he see here's what you're off confusing. Of the air. right okay you're confusing and i promise i'll give you a chance to respond so we don't talk over each other so so what i think you're confusing is the government mandating it, right? The government didn't mandate that MSNBC take... Why is MSNBC... Okay, okay. So why? So the question should be, why is MSNBC's position in alignment with the government? Please, riddle me that, Batman. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why is the, why is the, why is MSNBC's position with the government? They're a journalistic outset. Why do they have a position? They're not supposed to have a fucking position. You have to explain this to a journalist. Take off. Again, folks, I'm in my basement doing this, and I know this. <laughs> Phil Donahue, whether that's true or not true, it was a decision made by a private employer in that context, right? What is happening in Russia is they are demanding, mandating, that if you don't take this position, you are gone. And as a result... So so he's so he's he's like, well, just make it clear. You know, if you're seeing an MSNBC, make it clear. Like, hey, if you speak against the, the illegal invasion of Iraq, you're gone. Just make it clear, I guess. I'm assuming that's what he's saying. You see how fucking dumb he sounds? To me, it's more comparable to saying, well, why don't you allow, for example, a North Korean news station to be on the air? Because you know what? More speech is better. Your response. Nobody likes God floppy damn it. I have to get We the People holsters have created a hard, have a sturdy block. belt to keep everything you need oh, safe shit. They got and one secure. Size. I'll make copy. What makes this belt even better is... It should look fire. Inside... Oh, Russia. yeah, we pro-gun over here, baby. Russia, for television networks aimed at Russians, I agree with you. There is a high degree of state-sponsored control. I agree with that. We're talking about RT aimed at international audiences, and I just gave you an example of Afshan Ratanzi of a show called Going Underground on RT that has been very critical of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. 
So the premise of your point is false. <coughs> Ashim Ratanzi has not been fired. No one has told him what to say. He is a voice of dissent. And in terms of the difference between U.S. and Russia, we just happen to have a much more sophisticated propaganda system here. It's true. There's no state uh, sponsor telling journalists what to say. Everybody just internalizes it because they know mm. that. I think it's a mixture of assholes like this that are propagandized. And I think you have the people, I would say like more of the progressive people and shit like that, not TYT because they know what they're doing. But I do believe some people sniff their own farts, basically. Like you have people that go to journalism school and you're, and, and, you know, so, you know, surprisingly, they're regurgitating State Department talking points. If you had to go to journalism school, you're not a journalist. I'm sorry to tell you that. <laughs> you don't have to go to school to become a journalist. I'm going to tell you that right now. Go out and ask fucking questions. That's journalism. <laughs> that if they act like Phil Donahue and say the wrong thing, they'll be canceled, which is exactly what happened to him. And if you don't think that has yeah. an impact on people and getting them to toe the party line, I'm sorry. I just don't think you're being fair yeah. here. But Phil Donahue was taking... He's, 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 he's being a propagandist, Aaron. He's a propagandist. That's what he's being right now. He's being dumb on purpose. And off of the air for right. saying the wrong things about the Iraq war. Okay. And that's why... He, okay, Aaron, stop talking so I can say my bullshit. Everyone is always on board whenever there is a war or a regime change operation that the U.S. is behind. He, here's, it's almost impossible here's what I to think find you're... a voice. Of... I wouldn't be surprised if we find out this guy was a former lobbyist. He looks like a lobbyist, dog. Straight up. <laughs> Dissent inside the U.S. Okay. media. Here's what I think you're getting wrong about the U.S. media. Is these days... Being a voice of dissent in the U.S. media, being an iconoclast, gets you enormous attention. It gets you social media followers. It's why Tucker Carlson does what he does. It's why Glenn Greenwald does what he does. Oh, so, it, so now we're shitting on Glenn Greenwald, one of the greatest journalists of our generation. Did you, <coughs> you see how he sounds just like Sam Cedar, Cenk Uger, Anna Kasparian, Emma Vigley? You see how he sounds like all, all of those neo-progressives? You know, so quote unquote independent media. You see how they all sound the same? They sound just like these assholes. <laughs> My God. Gets you enormous attention to be able to take these positions to say that, oh, you're going to get in trouble. That that's why people take the position. I'm not taking any of the positions I'm taking because I'm worried about what some higher level person is going to do or say. I'm doing it because I believe it. Now, you may think I'm brainwashed. Okay. I don't believe him. I don't believe him when he says that because he sounds like a propagandist. Of all this talk about propaganda, he sounds like a propagandist. I don't believe him when he says that. That's, that's, that's fair. Uh, you can take that position. But there is no greater being informing us what we have to say. You get the final word. Actually, there are. They're called corporations. You just described it in your own fucking segment. He just described it in his own segment. Oh, my God. Well, you raised the example of Tucker Carlson, and you're right. That's one example he literally just described the ar the architecture of how propaganda works in America in the beginning of his segment on how private corporations silence voices and shit like that. Um, he was basically describing the woke mob at the beginning of the um, video. He just described the same thing. Take out the woke mob and put corporations or put the state or put, you know, put it, the state and, and corporations are this. This is why people say the United States is a fascist government because our corporations and state are like this. He literally just described the architecture of it and his fucking he's such a moron. He doesn't understand it in a sea of cable news hosts who dissent sometimes on the state party line when it comes to war and i don't agree with tucker carlson on most things but i do think that when it comes to warmongering whether it's in ukraine or in syria he has taken a dissenting position it's true no one's taking him off the air but what's happening to him he's facing constant allegations of being a russian asset a traitor to russia he's been facing a very heavy campaign and people who want to take him off of the air now they haven't succeeded because he's so popular and he's so <laughs> profitable for fox but that's a rare exception everybody else in cable news and this is why in msnbc when they have panels about the uh, war in ukraine if, 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 there Ra ever if rachel maddow came out tomorrow and started doing segments where she sounded like jimmy Dore, rachel maddow would not have a fucking job tomorrow i promise a you dissenting that. voice like mine who points out actually that the u.s has a major role in this crisis in backing a coup in Ukraine in 2014, pumping billions of dollars worth of weapons into the war that's broken out since, refusing to take NATO expansion off of the table, even though NATO expansion, I, I think, is suicidal for everybody, especially Ukrainians. You, won't, you will not see a voice like that allowed on NBC News or CNN. And that tells me something. It tells me that, yes, we don't have state-mandated censorship. We have a much more sophisticated form of it. And I'm opposed to all censorship, whether it's the U.S. variety or the Russian variety. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Aaron Mate, uh, I will just like a, just agree like a, to. Di 
just like Americans love their flavor of warmongering, you see like um, you know, like like the um the 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 Trump crowd is opposed to um well now I actually I don't even think they're opposed now. They've been they've been drinking it up, but they like their flavor of of imperialism and they like and Americans love their flavor of censorship. That's just how it goes. Conservatives were perfectly okay when they were censoring people during the Iraq war times. They were perfectly okay with that. But now they're not okay with like pink haired college kids, pink haired college kids like kicking Ben Shapiro off like a um you know a, a, po- a panel and everything. But they're per- they're okay with Israel literally cens- censoring journalists. Abby Martin got kicked off of doing a regardless of how you feel about Abby Martin. Now, I have my problems with Abby Martin right now too. But Abby Martin got kicked off of doing a speech at some college because of her anti Israeli government stances. Because they we literally have laws here in the government laws that were lobbied on um for by the Israeli lobbyists and the Israeli government. We have laws here in the states that that literally say you can't speak against the Israeli government and that you have to like in some cases when people get jobs like contractors and shit like that they have to pledge allegiance to Israel. It's nuts. It's not. I might. I I can't remember if I did a segment on it on the channel or not. If I didn't, I'm going to cover it. I'm pretty sure I covered it though. But yeah, this is nuts. Disagree, but uh, it's an important <laughs> discussion. And oh I know. Look, and I and I appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks a lot. I, Jesus thank Christ. you for having me. Thank- Jesus Christ, uh, fucking Aaron rolled that guy, bro. Aaron fucking rolled that guy. All right, let me get into the comments. Donahue, Hedges, Abby Martin. We're all censored by U.S. mainstream media. Uh, then went to RT and all said they have full control of what they uh, could say on air. Yeah. Uh, this Dan dude is talking like he's not even listening. To air. He's not because he's a propagandist. He's literally taking what he's saying, ignoring it, and then spewing out his bullshit. Uh, the government paid... the. Go- the government paid by the defense contractors didn't censor Donahue. It was a private company paid by the defense contractors who censored him. That's fine. It's crazy to me how many people on the left uh, deep throat the Democratic yeah it is uh, p- party position on guns. It's almost hilarious. Um, it's almost unanimous. Yeah, it is. It is. All right. So there's that. Uh, the, the, that segment went longer than expected because I found I found this great video. So. Glad we found it. I'm gonna have to chop it.